Developed in the late 2270s as a combat-oriented cruiser to counter the latest warships of the Klingon and Romulan empires, the Belknap class cruiser proved to be the right ship for the wrong situation as her intended use case, a war between the Federation and the Klingon Romulan alliance, would never happen. In peacetime, the ship was found to be far too combat oriented and as a result was kept generally close to the Federation core, where the few ships built acted as a strategic reserve in the event of war, quietly wasting away until they were decommissioned in the early 24th century. The ship measured in at 290 meters long, was 141 meters wide, and 68 meters tall as built and would be armed with 16 phaser ball mounts in eight twin banks, these being a more powerful model than those fitted aboard cruisers of the period, backed up by two twin photon torpedo launchers, with a magazine of 32 Mark VIII photon torpedoes carried, from which both could draw. Crew for the ship was 290 in peacetime, with provision for an added 150 officers and crew to perform various secondary roles. The ship could achieve speeds as high as warp factor 8.6 for brief periods, with a normal cruising speed of warp factor 7 on the old scale. By the late 2260s, the Federation series of closely related battleship classes was beginning to show its age. With the first ships of the series, the Federation class itself, originating from the early 2250s and being designed in the aftermath of the Four Years' War. With even the final ships of the series, the Folly class, dating from the middle of the 2260s. Some thought had been given towards refitting these ships in a manner similar to that performed later to the USS Enterprise and USS Hornet using components developed for the Miranda and related classes. But this was seen as prohibitively expensive, little less than building a whole new ship, and in the end would result in the same number of ships being available at the conclusion of the program as when you started. These plans, hotly debated as they were, would be scrapped following intelligence reports about new Klingon and Romulan battleships, which far exceeded all current designs in Starfleet service in the realm of capability. Now feeling as if they had been left behind, Starfleet would approve, in 2269, the development of a new combat-focused cruiser, using the new Constitution II class as a basis, but with much increased firepower. Development of the new class would proceed quickly, with the largest bottleneck for the ship being its newly developed reactor, which was necessary to provide power for the increased power consumption needs of the ship in battle, thanks to its larger shields, more powerful thrusters, and more numerous weapons compared to normal line cruisers. In fact, this ship generally was often referred to at the time as a battleship in a cruiser's hull, reflecting its very high amount of firepower to displacement. Despite the time spent on the new reactor, some knowledge of which would go on to influence the Excelsior's own reactor design later on, a prototype would begin trials in 2274, with production approved the next year. USS Belknap entered service with Starfleet in 2275, after passing her trials and would be followed by several other members of the class, a total of 11 members eventually entering service out of a planned 32. The reasons for this limited production run were twofold. Firstly, the ships were found to be very maintenance heavy, requiring significant dockyard time at regular intervals thanks to their overpowered frames, seeing as they were, in essence, battleships on a cruiser hull. The class was also very specialized, being built to, in essence, serve exclusively as a line warship, and thus was ill-suited to the traditional cruiser roles of patrol, exploration, colonial support, and diplomacy. And secondly, the hot peace with the Klingons and Romulans had changed with the breakup of the Klingon-Romulan alliance in 2273 
which altered the arms race into a three-axis one from a two-axis one, and thus complicated matters significantly. In the good news for the Federation, Starfleet now had a far less active and long border to patrol close to its heartland, requiring fewer battle line units. But, on the other hand, they now had a vastly increased Klingon presence to deal with in the Arcanus sector. Arcanus was a vast stretch of space home to many resource-rich star systems, which the Klingon Empire and Federation had been hotly competing over since the 2230s, but which had been largely forgotten by the Klingons for half a decade as the direct border with the Federation heated up. But, with the Klingon presence in the region suddenly heating up and increasing drastically, Starfleet now needed not a fleet of powerful combat-orientated cruisers such as the Belknap, but rather large numbers of more general-purpose cruisers such as the Constitution II and Miranda. And production would shift accordingly in 2277 with the majority of Belknap class cancelled and the resources going to further members of the Miranda and Constitution classes of cruiser. The final Belknap USS Anson entered service in 2278, and, alongside the ten other members of her class, would spend the rest of the decade patrolling the Romulan and Klingon borders, which would largely make up the ship's time in the 2280s as well. Following the detente with the Klingon Empire in the aftermath of the Praxis explosion, and the subsequent signing of the Kittimer Accur Accords, Starfleet would find itself in an obligation to scrap large numbers of ships. And even after disposing of many of their 2240 and 2250s era vessels, the fleet still had extensive tonnage to make up. And, unsurprisingly, the Belknap class would find themselves on the chopping block. For some time, these ships would be held in reserve, Starfleet not wanting to part with their impressive firepower. But, eventually, in the early 2300s, ten of the ships would be scrapped, with their parts and other components going to keep the large fleet of Miranda-class vessels in service. One ship, USS Alvaro de Bezan, would be preserved by Starfleet to act as a training ship at Star Base 15 in orbit of Castilla. Acting as a cadet training vessel until 2354, when she herself was found to be in very bad material condition and was scrapped. While their service was brief, and their performance in service somewhat disappointing, the Belknap class is nonetheless a highly capable and interesting design born of the unique stellar political situation of the year they were designed. And while they would never have the chance to prove themselves in the scenario for which they had been designed, engaging Klingon and Romulan warships in vast fleet actions close to the border, there is little doubt that if they had been called to action, they would have served admirably in their intended role. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a like, uh, maybe a comment about if you knew that this class existed, this is a fairly obscure one. Finding pictures was less than easy. Um, so let me know if this is the first that you're hearing of this ship. Let me know if I'm pronouncing Belknap, Belknap incorrectly. I know that there was a U.S. Navy cruiser by that name. Not sure of the pronunciation, because that's a little bit after my interest in ships of that type ends. Um, regardless... Uh, hope you enjoy, and have a nice day.